things worthy to the be Lord is good, amen. lifted yes, up yes. above all the earth. Amen. We all ready for the word this morning? Yes. Amen. amen. I'm ready to give it. Praise God. Come on. <laughs> so we have been sharing with you on Saturday mornings the, the topic, and this is our, our fourth mm -hmm. week of dealing with this topic, simply entitled, Why Does Humanity Need Jesus Christ? Oh. What the, why does humanity need Jesus? Mm. We've given you, you, you two points thus far, and we said the first reason was humanity needs Jesus because only he is the answer to the weariness and brokenness that exists in the heart of men. Amen. Mm -hmm. All the things and troubles that we see in this world, Jesus is the answer. Mm -hmm. yes. He's not a, a, a answer, an answer, he is the answer. Amen. Nobody else can fix this but Jesus. Amen. All right, man. Because only Jesus can deal with the heart of men. Yes. Amen. We said the second reason why humanity needs Jesus Christ is because humanity needs Jesus because he is the only answer to the sin nature of man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, people do what they do because of their sin nature. Yes. Mm. Not just the sins, but the thing that produces that sin in their lives. Amen. Amen. And thank God that we as born again believers, the Bible says we are no longer sinners. Mm. But we've been a, we, we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a special people. And I tell you today that for any believer who, where sin is dominating your life, that is an indication you don't know who you are. Mm. Come on, come on. Come on, amen. When I realized who I was, I'm not saying I'm perfect. By no means, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm working too. I, I have days where I miss it. Amen. Oh. But I don't live in my failures. Oh, amen. I live in the success of Jesus. Come on, amen. Come on, amen. And because of his success in my failures, I always get back up. Yes, and I keep moving, praise God. Amen. 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 So today we're going to answer the question. We, we, we're asking the question again, why does humanity need Jesus? Well, today we're going we're gonna to deal with this. It, the, the reason why humanity needs Jesus is that without Jesus, Jesus, humanity does not know how to do life. Amen. Mm. Without Jesus... Humanity does not know how to do life. See, we run, we, we run to the world to fill the emptiness on the inside and find that after we give ourselves to the world, we still are left feeling empty. Amen. Thus, we run more to the world, hoping that more of the world will fill that emptiness, only to find ourselves more broken, emptier, and more alone. Mm. See, many people feel that giving themselves to the world will make them feel alive. But all the while, they are losing so much more of themselves, and their lives become messier, and they don't find that life that they ran to the world to get. I want you to look, at, look with me at John chapter 1. John chapter 1, we'll start to look at verses 1 through 5. And, we, and it says this, in the beginning, the Word already existed. Amen. Yes. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mm -hmm. He was already with God in the beginning. Everything came into existence through him. Amen. Not one thing that exists, it exists was made without him. That means you were made by him. Glory. He was, this is in verse 4 is what I want to look at. He was the source of life. And that life was the light for humanity. The light shines in the darkness. And the dark has never extinguished it. Mm -hmm. We said the reason why humanity needs Jesus, because without Jesus, humanity does not know how to do life. Mm -hmm. That's why we came to Jesus, because only he could give us the true meaning of life. Say that. And the lie and deception of the enemy is that the world has your answer. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that as you give yourself to the world and the things of the world, that you'll find that the world gives you no return except that which breaks you, yes. mm -hmm. that which empties you, yes. that which uses you. And so we think that the world is going to teach us how to do life, but we got to go back to the beginning, the source of my life. And the source of our lives is Jesus. Amen. And if anybody know how to do life, it's got to be the one through whom life comes. Yes, All right. Right. Amen. Oh, amen. If I'm going to do my life, i got to do it in Him. Right. Because only He knows how to do life right. Yes. Amen. Many times people are trying to figure out ways to do life. Many ways to, to, to I want to enjoy life. You can't enjoy life without the source of life. That's right. Amen. 
That's why, listen, that's why Hollywood and people of notoriety, why they always, why, why you find them always, they either, you find them getting addicted to drinking or drugs, they, they, they're, they, they're, they're mentally unstable, they deal with depression, all the while they have all this stuff. Because, they, because the world tells you, the, if you want to enjoy life, get stuff. Mm -hmm. Get no, notoriety, get fame, mm -hmm. get a good job, get a great position. Mm -hmm. Oh, be married and have the perfect marriage. No. Mm -hmm. You can't do life without Jesus. Come on. Amen. You cannot do life without Jesus. Now notice this, says that, that he was a source of life. And that life that he had was the light for humanity. Mm -hmm. Now, now the word light means it means to shine, or it to it means to make manifest. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can't find life by searching in dark places. <laughs> you find life by searching out the light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Have you ever been in total darkness in your house when the power go out? And, and, and when the power goes out and you can't see, how many of you feel comfortable in the dark? Why? Because you, you, you can't see. There's no direction. Isn't it amazing to me that we go to the world to, to, to come to a place where we believe we can see? When all the world's going to do is blind us. And, and when the power in your house goes out, uh, what makes you feel better? When the lights come on. Because mm -hmm. now you can see. Because without the light, you stumble over stuff. Mm -hmm. And onto stuff. And through stuff. And in stuff. Mm -hmm. That the light, had it been present, mm -hmm. would have revealed to you what's there. Let's see. You can't do life without Jesus. Amen. You can't do life right without Jesus. Come on, amen. Amen. So, so you, you've got to search out the light. You've got to look for Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Yes. Who's what? The light. Mm -hmm. The author and finisher of my faith. Why? Because only he can direct my path. Yes. Listen, because he's the only one that got light. <laughs> amen. Amen. Hey, come on, amen. He's the only one that got it. And the world's trying to convince us that light or life can be found in darkness. Did you try to, have you ever tried to fit in through drinking? Oh, yeah. And then you drunk a little more to, feel, to get more comfortable? Hmm. But, the, but the more loose you get, the worse you get. Mm -hmm. your, your, your decision making got jacked up. I mean, I, work, I went to school with a guy. You know, he was a big partier. You know, he liked to party. He'd always come back to school and talk about the women he had conquested over his vacation weekend. Mm. And he said, you know, man, I, I saw this girl, man, she was, I thought she was fine. I thought she was gorgeous, man. She was all that and bad. He said, dude, I woke up on the beach next to her. I went, oh my God, who is this thing? Mm. <laughs> see, darkness <clears throat> deceives you because it never allows you to see things for the, the way they really are. Mm. Right. That is the deception of darkness. That is the, the deception of the world. The world tells you, out of darkness, come over here, you can do life. Come over here, you can have fun. But you can't. Humanity needs Jesus because humanity doesn't know how to do life. Mm -hmm. That's why life came into the world. <clears throat> All right. That's why Jesus came, to show us how to do life. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That so whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Why? Because we didn't have it without him. Because he is the source of life. Now, what, what is the purpose of life? The purpose of life is this. Number one, the, the, purpose, of life is to re, the purpose of life is to reveal. The purpose of light is to reveal. Reveal what? Reveal the truth. Remember when Jesus manifested in, in John chapter 1, I think it's verse 13 and 14, it says... And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld him as the only begotten of the Father, mm -hmm. full of grace and what? Truth. Mm -hmm. Well, why, but where did that grace and truth come from? It came from the light. Mm 
Amen. Mm -hmm. So if you will understand the truth about anything, you've got to have the light, which is Jesus. He's not a light. He's the light. He is the light of the world. He is the light of humanity or for humanity. So, so light reveals. John chapter 3 verse 19 says this. It says, this is why people are condemned. The light came into the world. Mm. Yet people love the dark rather than the light because their actions were evil. Mm. People who do what is wrong hate the light. Mm -hmm. People who do what is wrong hate the light and don't come to the light. Mm -hmm. They don't want their actions to be exposed. Now think about that. They don't want their actions to be exposed. Mm. Why? Because they love darkness. Mm. So, so when people love darkness and not the light, but they want to give the appearance of spirituality, they, they adopt religion. Mm. I go to church and sit in the pew, say amen, go home and go right back to the club on Saturday night. You hate, listen, any of us, all of us, at some point hate him by our actions. Mm. But thank God for grace. Thank God for his reckless love. Amen. Thank God that in the midst of the stuff, he still loves us. Thank God for Jesus because when we miss it, we don't, we, we don't live in fear of losing our salvation because when we miss it, God can look at Jesus and Jesus took on the full wrath of God for all of our sins and he, he receives us. But I'm telling you something, it still breaks his heart. Because you just told, you just told the Father, I hate you. Every act of disobedience is saying to the Father, I hate you. Mm -hmm. Hate is a strong word. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a word that cuts deeply. Mm -hmm. When a parent is, is doing everything they can for their children, mm -hmm. they're trying to help them navigate life. Mm -hmm. And the child, in their anger and resentment for the parent's help, says, Mom, Dad, I hate you. Mm -hmm. It cuts them deeply. Mm -hmm. How do you how how deeply do you think we cut the source of love? Come on, come on. The originator of love. How deeply do we cut it? I believe we cut him deeply. He, listen, he loves us deeply and he hurts for us deeply. Mm -hmm. But he's not mad at us because he poured out his wrath where our sin was concerned, on Jesus. So all God can do, this is love you and be hurt by you. Mm -hmm. But he can't be mad at you. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to talk about grace yes. and mercy and kindness? Because I know I've done a lot of things that break his heart. Say that. I know I do stuff that, 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 that is wrong. Sometimes I think it's, it's good that we learn how learn to love God so that, we, that when people break our heart, we understand, rather than being mad at them for breaking our heart, it should be a reminder of how we break his heart. Amen. 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 And the same compassion and forgiveness he shows us, we should show the same thing to people that break our hearts. Mm -hmm. Amen. But the purpose of, of light is to reveal. It says, this is why people are condemned. John 3, 19. He says, this is why people are condemned. The light came into the world, yet people love the darkness rather than the light because their actions were evil. People who do what is wrong hate the light and don't come to the light. They don't want their actions to be exposed. But people who do what is true come to the light so that the things they do for God may be clearly seen. In other words, even if you don't necessarily know how to do everything right, you still come to the light. Because you know and understand that the light will reveal to you the things in your life that are out of tip with him. Amen. Amen. But not only will he reveal it, but in that light is God's love. Yes. And in his love, he will help you walk it through. Yes. And it's not going to be, it, it probably won't be a quick process. It probably won't be an easy process. But you can get through it. Now, I'm, I'm going to get a, real, a little honest with you about my own life. I don't, and I, I don't talk about my not because I'm ashamed of my, my past and, and where I've been because we all got a past. Amen. And we all been somewhere. Come on, man. Come on. But, but I had a real bad, uh, growing up uh, in my teen years, I had a real bad lust problem. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, that's just, no, that's harmonious, you know. But I also had a pornography problem. Mm -hmm. 
For a lot of years. Joined the club. <laughs> for a lot of years. I joined the club team. For a lot of years. And, and I remember all the time I would sit there at my computer and watch something. Mm -hmm. And then cry as I watched it. Mm -hmm. Because there was this conflict in me. Amen. For the good that I knew to do, I didn't do. But I ended up practicing the very thing that I hated. And I just struggled for years with it. And I remember one day I was, I, was, uh, I, was, I was praying about it. I was doing all that I knew to do. I was reading the word, professional word and stuff. And, and, uh, and I remember one day that I was standing up in my, in my room in the house and I was saying, God, you know, because I did, let me say that, I did good with it for years. When I came back to Jesus at 19, I did real good with it. I stayed celibate until I got married. I did real good with it. I wasn't having a real tug in it because I was just going after Jesus. But when I got married, marriage was a whole nother struggle for me. Because I married somebody who did not like intimacy. Mm -hmm. Not a put down of that person. Not, a, not an insult to them at all. People have their stuff. Everybody got their stuff. Mm -hmm. but, but rather than going to God and allowing him to keep me, I got into anger. Mm -hmm. And when anger rose up, Satan threw the hook oh, of pornography back at me. Mm -hmm. And I bit the hook. And what I got back into the second time around was worse than the first time. Amen. Amen. I'm, telling, and I'm sharing this with you because some of the things that, that keep people in bondage is their anger and unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. Not Listen, not just towards the people, but anger at themselves. Amen. My own anger towards myself and my anger towards her was keeping me in bondage. Mm -hmm. And it was keeping conne me connected to the hook. Mm -hmm. and, and getting free the second time, it was work. Mm -hmm. It was on. a lot of years Come on. Of, of crying and, and saying, God, why, I just want to be, I'm not talking about no two, three, I'm talking about a decade, a decade of just dealing with it and, and saying, God, I want to be free. Amen. But my bondage, See, the Bible tells us don't return to the thing he brought you out of because the, the second time around, it's going to be worse. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. took a lot the second time. A lot of years mm -hmm. of crying and saying, God, you know, getting, listen, uh, getting with my pastor mm -hmm. and saying, Pastor, I got this problem. Mm -hmm. And I need, I, I, I need to be free. And, and the thing that God brought me to was understanding your bondage is because of your anger. Mm -hmm. your, not, this, not just towards her. But towards myself. Come so you, you've got to let stuff go. Amen. Amen. You've got to let your past go. you got to let your failures go. Because you can't, you can't see life, nor can you see the light when you keep staring into the darkness of your past. That's right. You can't. Amen. And, and every now and then, and thank God I've been free for, some, for a while now, but every now and then the devil throws a look. Every time I get hurt, and here's what I know. Every time I get hurt, and every time I get angry, Satan comes and throws the hook. Mm -hmm. He's going to look at that, you'll feel better. No, I won't feel better. It's a lie. Amen. It's a lie. For the, it will not make. I remember the pain Come on. that I went through Come on. When, I, when I try to use that to make me feel better. And you've got to talk to this flesh. Mm -hmm. And you've got to talk to the enemy. Why? Because the more you talk to them and say, no, no, I'm not going back there. What, what am I doing? I'm inviting the light Amen. back into the room. Amen. I will not walk in unforgiveness towards them or myself. Oh, Lord. I'm going to let it go. Because I, I notice that every time people get hurt and every time they do stuff wrong, they always run back to past. And anytime you look into the darkness, you can never see clearly. Mm. I had to let it go. So, you know, I'm not going to beat myself up because I, I had a struggle. That's right. Amen. Come on. If I want to get out of my struggle, I got to look to my future. And I got to look to my future in the love of God. Amen. That's why, that's why walking in the love of God became so important to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if you, any of you listened to me on uh, Facebook while I was preaching at Pastor Gray at church. Mm -hmm. But one thing I said is I, I was tired of being angry. I was tired of being upset. I was tired of getting my feelings hurt and then turning around being angry. I just, I, just like, I just don't even want to be mad at people no more. I just don't want to waste the energy because I know where it leads to. Anytime you walk in anger, you are pulling yourself back into darkness and it's going to create a perversion in your life. Mm. And I just don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that. I want to be like Jesus. 
But the light revealed it. See, but here's the thing. When I came to that place of brokenness and lay before the Lord, he, that getting in his presence revealed to me the problem. And he said, Donald, you've been trying to fix this in your own strength. Amen. Amen. He Same. said, why don't you just ask me to help you? Same. Come on. I said, oh, help me, please. And, <laughs> and the thing that I struggled with for years, listen, he delivered me in a week. Mm -hmm. Amen. Same. But I had to come to the place, listen, of letting go of the anger of against myself because I felt God. I wasn't worried. That's how I felt. I felt ashamed. I felt embarrassed. I felt, you know, here I am, you know, a minister and I'm struggling with this stuff in my life. And, you know, and, and the good thing about it, y'all, I didn't try to fix it on my own. Please. I had some good covenant brothers that I went to and I sat down with. I said, I just need to tell y'all something. Because I need somebody to hold me accountable. And I told my covenant brothers what I did. You know, and I thank God for the love of God because not none of them ever rejected me. Come on. They said, brother, we understand. And, and I said, we just want you to know we're here for you. We love you. And we, yeah, we'll hold you accountable. So that they asked me, how's it going? You've been looking at something? Mm -hmm. And I thank God for that. Amen. Now, how want, ain't none of your business. Now, now, that's between me and the Lord. No, 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 hold up. Mm -hmm. We are accountable to one another. The Bible said that we're to share our faults one with another, not just with everybody, but with people that are called to you to help you walk out of stuff. There are things that you should be able to, somebody, somebody's in your life that you should be able to reveal all of you to, mm. who will not condemn you, but they will correct you and they will help you. Amen. Right. Amen. But the light reveals that. Jesus reveals that. He, really, he will reveal that sometimes even through the, the people in our lives mm -hmm. who will challenge us on the wrong stuff we do. Not because they're angry, but because they love us. The second, the second uh, purpose of light is it, it light directs. Mm. Psalms 119 verse 105 says this. It says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Yeah. See, some of, some of us, some, some, a, some, a lot of believers are stepping into stuff because they're not walking with the light. Mm. They're tripping over stuff mm. because they're not walking with Jesus. They're still living in their perception of that, oh, I got this. Mm. And that is a lot of you. If you had it, Jesus could have stayed home. Say that now. If you had your life and you could, you could manage your life, Jesus didn't need to come. Sure. It was impossible for you to have your life because you didn't have the source of life living with you. Amen. Amen. So what is, what is darkness? The answer to that is very simple. Any place where Christ is not exalted, mm -hmm. but you go there for, for your fun, mm -hmm. is a place of darkness. Anything that leads you into things that don't reflect Christ is darkness. Hmm. Come on. Look at Acts chapter 17, verse 28. You're going to read through verse 31. It says, it says this, Certainly we live and move and exist because of him. Because of who? Of him. him. We live. To live means you have life. Mm -hmm. Existing is not life. Sinners don't have life. They exist. Amen. They don't have life because they don't have the source of life, which is Jesus. Just because you're walking, breathing, and talking doesn't mean you have life. Why? Because Jesus is the source of life. Mm. You're you walking, talking, and breathing, but you're not living. Because only he knows how to live life. Mm. And if you're trying to live life without him, you're not living life. You're just existing in things that appear to be life. Mm. But it's not life. Because if you had life, life would continue beyond this life and you'd go into the presence of life. <laughs> See, that certainly we live, move, and exist because of him. As some of your poets have said, we are God's children. So if we are God's children, we shouldn't think that the divine being like, is like an image made from gold, silver, or stone, mm -hmm. an image that is the product of human imagination and skill. Mm -hmm. So you can't do life because Jesus is not a product of my imagination and something I made out of my own skill. Mm. Come on. Come on. Verse 30. It says, God overlooked the time when people didn't know any better. But look at what he says right behind that. But now he commands everyone, everyone everywhere to turn to him and change the way they think and act. Mm. He doesn't say he's going to change and do it for you. He said, you got to change. Mm. Mm -hmm. You gotta change the way you think, and you gotta you gotta change the way you act. See, when 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 it came to pornography, I had to change. Amen. But when I made the choice to change, he empowered my change. Amen. Amen. But I had see some people don't want to make hard choices. 
Amen. And they want God to just override and just come out and change it for them. He said, I can't do that because I gave you free will. But as my child, not only did I give you free will, I gave you my spirit to empower your decision. Say that. But people don't want to make decisions because they're too hard. They're too hard. What, if I make, what if I make the wrong decision? No decision is a wrong decision. That's right. Amen. Make a decision. I made, when I first started out at this point, I, I, made, I missed it a lot. Mm -hmm. but, but the more decisions I chose to make, the better I got at it. Nobody learn how to make decisions by other people making decisions for them. At some point, you got to let people make decisions. They're going to make the wrong decision, but if they're willing to learn mm -hmm. from those wrong decisions, they will be the better. Come on. Amen. Amen. Because you need Jesus to help you do life. Say that now. Because we don't know how to do it. You don't know what you need tomorrow. Mm -hmm. he don't, only he knows what you need for tomorrow. That's why he tell you don't worry about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, how this go? Let that go. You don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But he knows. All you need if he says go, that's all you need to know. Amen. Come on. Amen. When the Bible says when God called Abram to leave his, leave his country. Get away from his family. Come on, amen. amen. The Bible says the Bible says he went not knowing whether he even went in the right direction. Mm. Dude, that's some, that's some faith. <laughs> Say yes. that, man. He left home. See, he was people. Well, I wanted all mapped out. I I at least got to see some signs. He didn't have no sign. There was no road map. There was no <laughs> on your way to the promised land. There was nothing. Right. There was sand and dirt and walking. Come on. Amen. And the, and the word of the Lord saying go. He, God didn't say get out and go east. God said just get out. Mm -hmm. We don't trust that, do we? Mm -hmm. But you got to remember, you're not being led by you. Mm -hmm. You're being led by the source of life. Mm -hmm. if, and listen, if he is the source of life, then the best he can do for you is to lead you to a better life. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's all he can do. Keep leading you to a better life. Leading you to a better life. But here's the thing. You got to trust him enough to take him at his word. If he say go left, go left. But Lord, I was down this street last week and it was closed off. And I don't know. Don't matter. <laughs> he said go left. Because see, you might be thinking about a street. He might be thinking about a blessing. Mm. That's right. Mm. Uh -oh. mm. He might want to use you to bless somebody. Mm -hmm. You might pass somebody on the side of the road broken down, and, and God might just have you start to pray for. Them Amen. And help them out. See, everything ain't about you. Mm. Right. Mm. Amen. Praise God. So I want to show you, uh, what did I stop at? Oh, uh, oh, verse 30. It says, God overlooked the time when people didn't know any better. But now, if I say, but now, but now. now. meaning he ain't overlooking your stuff no more like that. Mm -hmm. But now he commands everyone, everywhere to turn to him and change the way they think and act. Amen. His command to you is change the way you think and act. Romans 12, 1 tells us that. that, tells us that. Be not conformed to this world, be transformed by what? Amen. The renewing your mind. Amen. In fact, verse 1 says, he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable. reasonable. God says, you, you taking control of your flesh is reasonable. Why? Because I empower you by my spirit to be greater than the thing that's in the world. Your flesh is in the world. Mm -hmm. But I empower you by my spirit that's greater than anything that the world presents to you. So if your flesh is out of control, it's not because you can't control it if you're born again. It's because you don't know how to control it. Mm. Which means you got to get into the presence of life. And life will show you how to bring that darkness under control. Because this flesh is darkness. Same. There's no light in it. it is, the Bible said it is your enemy. Yes. There's, no light, there's no light in this flesh. It's dark. It, it, everything about it is dark. He tells you, uh, bring your flesh under subjection. Because mm -hmm. it's just, uh, you are housed with darkness. And when you let this darkness lead you, you will always get led into trouble. So I want to I want to show you this skit because this is uh, I did this uh, because this is how we kind of deal with that. Y'all see my curtain up here? <laughs> All right. People think, no, I can go and hang out with darkness, and I'm cool. Okay. So this is kind of what happens to people. People like okay, we just, we just call this the club, okay? This is the generic club. And so we go into the club that's not playing anything for Jesus. 
And we go in this, do, 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 hanging out with a bunch of people, because, you know, when we went, we've we been, we been friends a long time. We, we're in the club, hey, ho, oh, we're in the club, hey, ho, oh, raise your hands, hey, everybody drinking, having fun, you, hey, ho, oh, hey, ho, oh, you know, and then, and then you get, the, as a believer, what happens with you then is while you're going, hey, ho, oh, uh, you start feeling that little twinge on the inside. And uh, so then you 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 hey and hoeing all night. <laughs> you hey and hoeing all night, and then you come out, and then you go home. You feel guilty, mm. and you feel bad, and you feel ashamed. And you come out, but Lord, I left it. I left the club, and I and I'm okay because I left the club. But you don't realize when you left the club, mm. the residual darkness mm -hmm. went with you. Come on, mm. just because you leave a place, don't mean you left the spirit. Come on, amen. And see, we, we, we leave the plate, but we don't leave the spirit. Mm -hmm. that, that makes sense? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. See, because darkness isn't just a place. Mm -hmm. It is a spirit amen. Mm -hmm. that will attach itself to you as you expose yourself to darkness. Sure. So this is why I wrote that. The darkness isn't just a place you go to, but it is a spirit that attaches itself to you. Mm -hmm. When you leave that place of darkness, listen, it will stay with you. Just because you left the place doesn't mean you left the spirit that inhabited the place. Oh, Lord. Amen. Listen, you may not run to the same place, the same person, or like myself, maybe you didn't run to the same porn porn pornographic page, but you are still running to the same spirit. Mm -hmm. you, may, you may leave a person, a place, or a thing, but you may carry the spirit of that person, that place, or that thing with you. Amen. So I'm out of the club. But, but the spirit of it is still with me. Mm. Mm. And you take it home with you. Mm -hmm. And you sleep with it. Never realizing that if you don't, if you don't get free from this, this thing will take up habitation in your house. Mm. The Bible says when a spirit is cast out, and that's what happened to you when you got born again. Those things that were cast out of you because the spirit of God moved in. Mm -hmm. And for that moment, you, you were free. You remember the first time you got saved? Oh, Dude, yes. it was, everything was like, woo! Everything was new. It was wonderful. Everything was new. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, that newness <coughs> began to be dimmed. Mm -hmm. And dimmed. And those hours you would spend sitting there looking at nature and looking at the clouds gave way to things of the world. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that when a spirit is cast out, it, it roams about into dry places. And then it says, I tell you what, I'm going to go back to the place I came to, that I came from. And the Bible says he goes back to the place where he came from. And he finds the house swept clean. That's the problem. The time that you, you got freed in Jesus, you didn't take the time to fill yourself back up with God. <laughs> you got fire insurance, but that's all you did. And you didn't nurture your relationship with God so that God could fill you with his presence so that when that spirit came back, and they will come back, when they came back, they would not have had a place in you because you had already filled yourself up Amen. with God. Amen. Amen. But the Bible said when that spirit comes back and he finds the house having been swept clean, he brings seven spirits worse than himself. And they move back in, and the Bible said the latter state of that man is worse than his former state. That's why when you leave the club, and, and I mean leave it for good, you got to go attach yourself to God and allow him to fill you up with his presence. There was a season of my life where I did not have a computer, and I did not have internet, and I didn't have cable. Because I had to take that time to fill myself up. I couldn't run with the same people, the same. I couldn't run with the lustful friends that I had back in high school. I had to let them all go Amen. so that I could be filled up with God. Because I realized that I didn't know how to do life. And I needed him to do life so that I wouldn't be walking around with these spiritual residuals living in my soul. Yeah, they weren't in my spirit anymore, but they were definitely on my soul. Amen. Amen. They were in my thinking, they were in my talking, and they were in my behavior. Mm -hmm. and, I, and people, are, Christians are carrying this stuff around. Hanging out, drinking with their buddies, you know, hanging out with the, with the frat brothers and the sorority sisters. And they hang, doing this stuff. Nobody's talking about Jesus. And you're hanging out in that environment for your hey-ho, for your fun. Mm -hmm. 
And then you wonder why you come out and you struggle with life. You struggle with your perception of God. Say that. You struggle with, with your identity in him because you've been identifying with the world. And we keep visiting the curtain. Hang it out. A little bit in, a little bit out. Out, in, out, in. But I'm okay. No, you're not okay. Let me tell you something. God wants you to be free. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be free from the world so you can live life. Thank you, Jesus. But as long as the world is there, you'll never live life. Because the world will always be pulling at your soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm going to leave this on because I want you to be reminded, this is what you, when you run to work, this is what you're putting on. This is what you're taking on. You're taking on the things of the world. You said, well, I'm not there, but you still, but yeah, but the spirit that was there is still with you when you go home. Mm. Oh, my God. Ain't that good? Amen. Yes, God gave is. me that this morning. Boy, that is good. Oh, I woke up. Yes, I woke up like this. <laughs> I woke up in Revelation this morning. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. So, I, so it says, here's my question. How do you know that, that, that this spirit, this, this worldly spirit, how do you know that it's still with you? Because here's the answer. No matter where you go, that same spirit will always find you. Mm. You can be at the grocery store and that spirit will find you. Mm. If you're lustful, that spirit will find you. Mm -hmm. If you're in the pornography, guess what? Those ads go find you. Mm. They go find you. Some billboard go find you. Mm. Somebody go find you. It's go find you. That's why the woman, I always say the woman who, 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 who made, let's say she lives in Tennessee and she's in a, an abusive relationship and she wants to clean her arms. You know, I don't want to clean it. I'm getting out of here. So she moves all the way to California. Gets to California. Meet another man who's just like the man she had in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's a spirit that follows you. Mm. And if you don't deal, you can, deal, you can do all the natural stuff you want to. You can cut yourself off and all that. But if you don't deal with that spirit, mm -hmm. so like I had to deal with that spirit of pornography. I had to deal with it. I couldn't ignore it. Couldn't say, oh, like, no, nope. Not dealing with it. Nope, you are not coming back up in here. I got to deal with it. Right. If I don't deal with it, it's going to deal with me. Mm -hmm. Come on, amen. Amen. Listen, uh, Galatians, 5 verse, Galatians 5 verse 1 says this. This Christ has freed us so that we may enjoy the benefits of freedom. Christ has freed us so that we might enjoy the benefits of freedom. What's freedom? It's living. When you're free, you can live. You can enjoy life when you're free. Because nothing's keeping you in bondage. The only thing you tied to is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then he says, therefore be firm in this freedom. And don't become slaves again to sin. Amen. Amen. See, Jesus brings you out, but then people go back and play with it and think, I need to play with it a little bit, not too much. So, and, and listen, the world can invade your house through your TV, through your computer social media. There's a lot of ways to invade your life. Mm -hmm. But you have to cut the world out of your life as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, you shouldn't be running after the world mm -hmm. and the things of the world or the people of the world. She should be, the Bible says, God says, those of him, those that seek me shall find me. <laughs> well, what happens when I find him? I find life. I find purpose, y'all. I would never be, I, I, listen, if I didn't follow the Lord, I would not be doing what I'm doing today. And I'm telling you, what I do today as, as a pastor, as a minister, uh, as a father, I love what I do. Mm -hmm. I love, I absolutely, positively love what I do. Why? Because I'm living life in Him. So here's a question for you. How do we stay free to live this life in Christ? I'm going to give you seven steps to freedom. Seven steps to freedom. I want to look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4, we'll start at verse number 6. Because see, this will always try to invade you again. Mm -hmm. This darkness will always try to look for a way to attach itself back to your life. Amen. But James chapter 4, verse 6 says this. But God shows us even more kindness. Scripture says, God opposes arrogant people. But he is kind to humble people. Mm -hmm. here's, what, here's what arrogance is. Arrogance is you think 
you can play with the world and be okay. You're arrogant. Mm -hmm. When God clearly told you, what fellowship does light have with darkness? Mm -hmm. So there's something in your flesh, something in your soulish realm, that you are allowing to dominate you. Mm -hmm. Thus, listen, when you allow it to dominate you, the guilt and shame, you stop enjoying life. Mm -hmm. There were times when I didn't even want to preach because of the shame that I felt. I was more than glad to not preach because of the shame that I felt. <clears throat> I, I was more than glad to just hide off in the closet and just, just be, you know, whatever. Because mm -hmm. I didn't want to deal with the shame of what I, what I was doing. But the Spirit of God revealed to me that anything that works in darkness has to be brought into the light. So you, listen, so, so you have to be willing to have people in your life that you can be honest with. Everybody needs a pastor. You need a pastor you can sit down with, or, you know, those who are assigned to do that, to sit down with them and tell somebody about your life. Mm -hmm. Because as long as you try to keep it hidden, and keep it, and hope this person, I hope that you will always live in darkness. Because you are afraid of what people will think about you when they find out about who you really are, or who you really were. Mm -hmm. that's, why I, that's why I stand up, and sometimes when I'm, when I'm, when I'm standing up and I'll talk about being molested because that, there's a lot a lot of people went through that but they go through a lot of shame mm -hmm. as though they did something wrong. Mm -hmm. That's why I talk about it because I'm like no I'm not ashamed of that because that, 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 that was not something that was perpetrated by my hand. And even even with the pornography stuff, I still talk about it because I want people to understand that we all have closets, we all have things we, we go through, but if people judge you because they you have stuff, then guess what? They're not honest with themselves. <laughs> Say that man. Hey man, it's not like I'm practicing that today, but I'm saying I had that was a part of my life. I went through it. But thank God I came through it through, with Jesus Christ. And I'm now living life because of him. All right, this James chapter 4, verse 6 says this. But God shows us even more kindness. Scripture says God opposes the arrogant people, but he is kind to humble people. First step to freedom. So place yourself under God's authority. And listen, you cannot place yourself under God's authority and not be willing to place yourself under man's authority. Mm -hmm. I had covenant brother mm -hmm. that told me, don't do this. You don't need to go over here. They told me, don't do not. And I, you know what? I, had a, I submitted to that. Yeah, you know, you can't, you know, you know, man, you can't do that. Yeah. Come on. People don't want that. Uh, I, just me and Jesus. It ain't just you and Jesus. Because mm -hmm. it was just you and Jesus. Hey, Jesus saved you. You could have died and wanted to heaven be, it could be just you and Jesus forever. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus left you in the world with people that you have to interact with. Oh, Lord. Come on, amen. amen. So, but he said, but place yourself under God's authority. So if I'm going to place myself under God's authority, that means i got to place myself under God's word, which is God's wisdom. Mm -hmm. So someday I don't need to go. Some people, like like the, the friend of mine I had who had a, lust, a very strong, lustful spirit, I loved him dearly. We have been friends since we were child, childhood friends from middle school, if not before. But the, when I got saved and, and I kind of reconnected with him and he was lusting after everything that was walking by. I, I said, no, we cannot be friends. Mm -hmm. We done. It's a wrap. The day he took me to Hoops <laughs> and told me to look at this girl, I don't think she has on underwear. Mm -hmm. Done. Check, please. We're done. Mm -hmm. This friendship is done. I was done with it. And I, and I don't hate him. Even now, when I see him, I still love him. You know, I treat him kindly. But where that relationship, we done. Mm -hmm. Hey, how you doing? Good to see God bless. Gone. Mm -hmm. We done. Because you ain't you're not because you're not leading me to light. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there there's been a lot of people in my life that I just said done. I'm done. It's a wrap. I, I just can't I can't I can't get pulled back in the darkness. Sure. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm not sorry. I'm sorry your feelings might be hurt, but for mm -hmm. me, I'm good. Come on. See, we don't want to make those hard. But we've been friends forever. Yeah, and it's killing you. Mm -hmm. And it's keeping you from life. Mm -hmm. Anybody, is there anybody that will pull you, uh, pull you over into things, or have you do things that's not for the glory of God? That is not a friend. Come on. Come on. That's right. That's not a friend. The Bible, if they love the world, they are an enemy to God. Mm -hmm. And if you're running with them, you now just told God, I hate you and I love them more. Mm -hmm. It costs something. If you thought being a Christian 
didn't mean it wasn't going to cost you something. <laughs> you fooled yourself. You were lying. Jesus said, if you go follow me, mm -hmm. Peter, it's going to cost you your life. Mm -hmm. Jesus, said, Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you too. And people hear what people say, but if I cut off all my friends, they ain't going to have no You don't know the quality of friends God got for you because you're too busy still holding on to the dark. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. I found wonderful friends when I let them go. Mm -hmm. I found wonderful friends in God. When I let that all that go, now I went through a couple of years of being alone. And it was really just me and God in the Bible. Which is all right. You know, which was a lonely period for me. And I remember sitting in my room crying and saying, God, I wish I had one godly friend. I just wish I had somebody. I, and, and out of my spirit, I'm t I, I really believe out of my spirit rose above my flesh. And my spirit said, but nevertheless, if it means being along with you, mm -hmm. then I'll be along with you, but I will never go back to that life again. Amen. And I made up my mind. I left, I left everything. Some people live in a bubble, and, and they want God to do everything within their bubble. God, mm -hmm. Listen, God had to take me out of my bubble. Mm -hmm. Took me away from all my friends. And one day I was sitting around, saying, Lord, I was wondering what they were. I said, Lord, I just want to go back and, you know, see how they're doing. And here's what the Lord said. He said, Donald, he said, do not go back for them. He said, let them come to where you are. Mm -hmm. But don't you go back to them. Amen. And I couldn't go back. Why? Because I wanted life. I'd already messed up my life doing what I wanted to do. And I wanted to experience the life of God. And you can't do that living in darkness. And running with people who, are, who, who encourages you to do things that you know don't lead you to Jesus. Because mm -hmm. those spirits will attach themselves. And look, the club is way over there, but in the spirit, it's just like this. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you, you still got a soul tied to it. Mm -hmm. And you think, well, I'm way over it. No, it's still attached to you. Still, still on you. Still hanging out with you. Because mm -hmm. the spirit of that place. Or the spirit of that thing, or that the spirit of that person is still with you. You can't enter this. You can't lay down with a dog with fleas and not get up with fleas. Mm -hmm. So you can't lay down in sin and wonder why that even when you leave the flea the flea ridden dog, why you still at home scratching? Because mm -hmm. because the residual of what he is, the spirit of what he is, is with you. And people don't really deal with the spiritual stuff. But the spirit, the spirit of, of places go with you. Have you ever walked in somebody's house and they were working, getting along, and you sensed it in the spirit? You knew? And then you went home, and, and you, but you stayed anyway, kind of hung out with And then when you got home, you started picking a fight with your spouse. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know why. You're like, why am I all irritable for it? Because you did that. the spirit of that place has come home with you. Mm -hmm. So you'll bring, you'll bring it home with you. And if you don't deal with the spirit, spiritual aspect of it, you can do all the natural stuff you want to, but if you don't deal with the spiritual implications of it, come on. you still not going to fix it. Come on. Amen. All right, he says, so place yourself under God's authority. That's the first step of freedom. Place yourself under God's authority. Submit yourself to his word. Submit himself, yourself to men and women of God who, listen, who genuinely love you and will say, look, you really don't need to do this. Mm -hmm. You really don't need to go there. You need to stay away from it. Now, they, they ain't going to make you. They ain't gonna, no, I'm not talking about people that will make you and try to control you, but they will advise you. I got people that advise me. Just like Pastor Coward advises me, Pastor Greg advises me, Pastor mm -hmm. Ricky, they advise me. They advise me on certain things where life is concerned. Mm -hmm. And I need, I need those objective views so that I don't be arrogant thinking I know it all. Because apparently I don't know it all or I wouldn't have been over in the ditch. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. So place yourself under God's authority. That's the first thing. This is the, sec the second thing you need to do. Resist the devil. Why? Because the hook, rest assured, look, when, the longer you stay away, the better you're going to be. Amen? If you're spinning, listen, if, if I submit to God, by my submission to God, I'm, I, by default, I am resisting the devil, which means this thing starts losing its hold on me, and I start like, no, I don't really want to do that no more. Mm -hmm. See, this, this represents the spirit of that thing. It's not me, it's the spirit that has attached itself to Amen. my soul. Amen. And I start hanging out with God, and I began to say, I, I don't want to want to do that no anymore. And I just, you know, I, I just, I, I'm not going back over it. I don't want to hang out with those people no more. What am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm breaking the hold of that spirit on my life. I'm not going no more. And it, it, it will get to the point where, where, where I will look at that place and be in utter disgust. Like, I ain't going, what's wrong with y'all? I'm going over there. Amen. 
crazy. Y'all foolish. Ain't going for that foolish shit. And that's how I feel about feel about lust and, and pornography. Hey, wait, 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 wait. No, I ain't going there. And you'll get to the point where you become so disgusted with sin, you'll see it the way he sees it. Mm -hmm. Come on, amen, I make sense. Amen. Amen. You'll, you'll, you'll throw it away because he's like, no, that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. Forget that. Shoot, I'm saying I'm here with Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. So he said, place yourself under God's authority. He said, resist the devil. And then what he said what would happen. And he will run away from you. Mm -hmm. He will run from you. But see, most people aren't resisting. You know, it's like it's like those movies. I see the you see the, the man that's trying to get with the girl. He's rubbing on. Her. She's like she's like no, no, which is just a yes. Mm. <laughs> no, you, you, you your no has to be emphatic. the fervor, emphatic. That's the word. Thank you, Dick. It has to be emphatic. It has to be with fervor. No, get your hand. You don't have a right mm. to mess with me. Mm. Get away from me. I mean, I, this, I remember my first, my, my first, my first intimate girlfriend, my first, this, that girl had a hook in me. I could never say no to that girl. Could not, listen, could never say, if I, if I, I could, I'm just being honest with you, I couldn't say no to her. Every time I saw it, it, it was a yes in me. Like, no, 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 it was like, yes. And one day I was at I just, I, I wanted to be free. And one day I was at Toys R Us with, with us. I can't remember who I was. They don't, no, I, was, I, I remember. I was with Dave, a friend of mine named Dave. And I saw her around the corner. And boy, I grabbed Dave by the arm and said, we got to go. Sometimes you got to run. Mm -hmm. Flee in terror for your life. <laughs> Come on. If freedom is really that important to you. Shoot, I ran as fast as I could. Nope, don't know you. Never saw this. Never saw again. One mm -hmm. day I was on Facebook, and this little, little young dude hit me up. And uh, on Facebook, on message, came to find his her son. And he said, you know, my mom was just talking about how you was her first love. No, 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 no. I said, I, I was nice, but in my, I said, well, you know, I said, I'm doing well. I said, doing well, love, love the Lord. I said, you know. I said, Mom, don't hope she's doing well. But in my spirit, I said, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Not getting my number, not getting my address, no. Mm -hmm. Now, I was polite to him. Mm -hmm. But in my, but I was saying out loud when I'm saying, no, 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 <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. Have never seen her again, never had no intentions of seeing her. And, and listen, I'm not even, at this point, I'm not even attracted to her. Amen. But I don't care. I ain't playing around with it. Amen. I'm not playing with it. I'm not playing with it, though. My no will be no. The Bible says let your yes be yes and your no be no. And anything else is sin. Mm -hmm. Nope. Not going there. Look at verse 8 says. I'm giving you these seven steps. It says come close to God and he will come close to you. Mm -hmm. So in my resistance of the devil, I got to work. Since I'm, I'm breaking my relationship with the devil, I got to establish my relationship with the Father. Amen. So you can't leave something without having something to replace it. That's right. That's right. Amen. You leave darkness, you better consume yourself with light. That's right. When you were spending every Saturday night at the club, you better be spending every Saturday night in the house of God. <laughs> Come, amen. Amen, amen. If you run in the streets on Friday night, you might have to run to church on Friday night. You got to replace it so that your body and your mind understands that we don't function that way anymore. When I was at the club, you no, know, at the concert, screaming over Beyonce, I'm gonna find me a praise and worship service where we're gonna lift up the name of Jesus and give glory to his name. Amen. You gotta replace it. Amen. Come on. And as you do that, God begins to draw close to you. Yes. He begins to begin to move around you and so that, listen, so that who you used to be will lose their appeal to people when they see you again because there's too much Jesus on that's you. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. They will sense that. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, they may try it. They start talking about the goodness of Jesus. Let me tell you how good God has been to me. He freed me from Negroes like you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. That's how good he is. <laughs> he freed me from pornography. I don't need that no more. I don't need the club anymore because I got a better high in Jesus. I don't need the drink anymore because I'm high on him. Yes. Thank you, Father. Amen. I 
I learned how to have a good time in him because I learned how to enjoy life because life has moved into me. Amen. So you gotta come close. You gotta come close. You not well, where are you? No, that's no, you just come close. Hi, well, how do I come close? Pick up the word. How about just stand in your room and just begin to lift your hands and praise the Lord? How about just give glory to his name? Tell him how wonderful he is. Tell him how much you love him. Yes. Tell him how he's all together loving, Lord. And start thanking him for the freedom that he's given you in Jesus. Lord, I thank you that I may free, that nothing of the world has a hook in me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. There's what he says other than that. Clean up your lives. <laughs> there's stuff, listen, there's stuff in your life that need to go. Clutter stuff of your past that need to go. Things that when you look at them in your home and in your car is a reminder of where you've been. You need to let it clean it out. Right. Get the clutter of your past away from you. Come on, amen. amen. To, you, to you men who, who, who used to wear those little tight suits going out to the club, and you still got it hanging in the closet. And every time you look at it, you kind of smile because you think about the day when you need to clean that out of your life. Because it is a pull to your back to a life that used to be. Got to clean it out. Well, but you know how much I paid too. What's more important than suit on your soul? That's mm. right. Amen. Got to clean it out. Amen. Got to clean it. Clean up your. You said clean up your lives. Might have to change your phone number. Mm -hmm. You might have to take some of your friends off speed dial. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Sometimes I tell you, son, you just need to move. You know, I met one guy up who was Ubering with, and I, it blessed me. He said he was from, uh, I think, like California somewhere. I said, what brought you to Nashville? He said, man, he said, I'm telling you what brought me to Nashville. To be honest, he said, I need to be honest with you. Addiction. He said, I could not find any place to go in California that didn't feed my addiction. Mm -hmm. he, said, he said, and a person advised me, there are a lot of support groups in Nashville. Sit him down to the Bible. He said, go down there. Get involved with those groups. He said, I packed up everything. And I came here. He said, I've been clean for a year. Mm. But he had to move. Mm. Now all my friends, he told me, now all my friends, all my connections are here. Yeah, all your connections left you in the dirt. But I, I said, man, I said, man, I, I, I honor you for having the courage to do what so many people I tell them to do won't do. Mm. I said, I encourage you. I, 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 I applaud you. For having the courage to pick up your whole life and go somewhere that you knew was better for you than where you were. I applaud you. Because it takes a lot of courage to do that. Yes, it does. Oh, Lord. I just prayed with him. Just encourage him. Praise God. I, I, I said, boy, I wish I could get some more people to understand that you need to leave where you are. But where you are, that's your old stomping ground. Mm. And that's where you do all your dirt. Mm. Isn't it amazing that in the Bible, God always brought people from where they were and took them somewhere else? Mm -hmm. I mean, took Moses out of Egypt for a while. Took David out of his father's house and didn't value him and put him in a castle. Mm -hmm. Took Abram, Abram away from his family and moved into a farm because he didn't know where he was going. God will move you. He'll say, no, time you go from here. Because you can mess this. You know, somebody, somebody said, he said, sometimes we mess up an area so bad that we have to leave it mm -hmm. so that we can get clean. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, even, even if God sends you back, he may send you back, but when he sends you back, you'll be nothing like you were when you left. Mm -hmm. Thus, you won't have the pull to go back to those old people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. How do we? I, I, love, I love East Nashville. I left East Nashville for 17, 18, no, but I'll tell you about it. I left East Nashville for about 20-some years mm -hmm. before God sent me back to it. But when I came back, I was somebody totally different. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So he said, he says, so he says, clean up your lives, you sinners, and clear your minds. That's another step to, to freedom. Clear your mind. How you clear your mind? Get in the word. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Romans 12, 2. Uh, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's how you get free. This is, this is he said, clean your mind, you, dub, you doubters. Mm -hmm. His last thing. He said, be, more, be miserable, mourn, and cry. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't sound like that. They don't sound like God. No. Mm -hmm. you, you, see, some of you, you have no sorrow over your sin. Mm -hmm. 
You have, some people have no sorrow over stuff that they do. Well, yeah, but. No, you should cry. It, it should bring, listen, when, when, I was, when, when I was into pornography, you know, I can't tell you how many days I cried. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to be free. I didn't know how to get free. I just wanted to be free. Amen. Amen. See, my tears were an indication to God what I'm doing. I know isn't right. And I'm agreeing with you. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how to get free. Say that. Say it. But he says, turn your laughter into mourning and your joy into gloom. And then verse 10, here's the last step to freedom. Humble yourselves, listen, in the presence of the Lord. Meaning this. Listen this. It means you, this is what it means, y'all. You get in his presence. Mm. And you take all that you are. Mm. And you just lay down and say, Lord, I'm all yours. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to do in my life, do it. Mm. Wherever you want to lead me, lead me. Mm. I'm yours. So you can't just do it anywhere. You got to do it in His presence. Mm -hmm. You got to say, God, this is the, all my brokenness, all my mess. Mm -hmm. I'm giving it to you because I don't know how to do life. I don't know how to do life, but you do. Amen. And if I'm going to live my life, I'm going to live my life for you, so that you'll get the praise and glory for my life. So that when people look at my life, mm -hmm. they'll see the love of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do in me what you want to, oh God. Do what you want. Take me wherever you want to take me. I don't care if it makes sense. Just take me where you want to take me. Lead me where you want to lead me. You lead me, I'll go. Whatever you want, God. And you got to start saying that. Whatever you want. That's what I say. Whatever you want from me. And, and people say, no, there's some of the things that I've done over the years, people have said, boy, that just seems hard. I say it would have been harder to not do it in his will. Come on. Mm -hmm. It would have been harder for me to do my own thing Come on. than to do his thing. Because if I do his thing, there's a grace that empowers me to do it. But I can do my thing without his grace, and I will fail in it every time. <laughs> but we have to come to that place, y'all, where we say that, here I am. Here all that. See, so you say, I don't know how to get, how, what if I say that I'm not really sincere? Take it one step at a time. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Take one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'll give you my all. Just mm -hmm. show me how to do it. Mm -hmm. Little bit by little bit. That's right. Inch by inch. Like, like I heard Pastor Nathan say in Vineyard, Vineyard Columbus Church, he said, it is, the Christian life is left foot, right foot. Left foot, right foot. It's one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Quit worrying about where you're going to be in five years or next week or next year. And take one, one step at a time. Left foot, right foot. That's all you got. Mm -hmm. And, and we have to leave. Listen, now, now why do we do this? Why, do we, why am I saying that we do all of this? We do all this so that we will learn how to live life. Because we can only live it through Jesus Christ. Now, here's the last thing he says. He says, humble yourself in the presence of the Lord. And look at the, look at the payout. Then he will give you a high position. Mm -hmm. See, you can't get a high position without a willingness to let go of everything. Mm -hmm. You can't. I would, I, listen, I would have never become a pastor had I not been willing to let go of everything. Mm -hmm. I would. I let go. I listen, to do this, I let go of everything. I let go of my comfort. I let go of my fears. I let go of my desires. I let everything. Because it wasn't like, oh, y'all want to be a pastor. Yeah, woo. No, that was not on my agenda. But I let <laughs> everything go. Because I loved him. And you have to choose that for yourself. I can't make you choose it. Jesus can't make you choose it. It is a choice that has to come from your own heart say to say it. You say, what if I said I felt? Dude, this is, give him something to work with. Amen. Give him something to work with. Start saying, Lord, I give you my all. Every day they say, Lord, I give you my all. 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 Say it every day. I give you my all. When, when, when that hook is thrown at you and they want to let you, no, 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 I've given my all. I've given my all to Jesus. Left foot. But well, what if I fail? No, down the road. Left foot, right foot. Left foot, right, quit worrying about it. Left foot, right foot. Left foot, right foot. Because all you got is right now. Oh, Lord. That's how God wants to. Listen, humanity 
has proven to us that they do not know how to do life. Look at our country. Look at the world around us. They don't know how to do life. But Jesus does because he is the source of life for all of humanity. Come on, man. And if he is the source of life for all of humanity, that means all of humanity needs him. Say that. Amen? Mm -hmm. Say that. So, so I'm going to stop right there. And uh, I pray that blesses you. I, I do pray that encourages you. And for you who are listening to my Facebook, I do pray it blesses you as well. Remember, this life is a left foot, right foot life. Mm -hmm. One day at a time, letting go of the world and embracing the plan of God for your life. It may not be, seem reasonable. It may not make sense to your friends. But if they are your friends, they will truly embrace you as you walk in the things of God. If they don't, they're not. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the word. We thank you for your people. And we thank you, Father God, for helping us and showing us how to do life. Yes. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness and your kindness towards us. We thank you, Father God, for just allowing us to experience life the way you intended for us to live. That you, you intended us for us to enjoy our lives, Father God. Not in a sense that we travel and do vacations, but that we have the pleasure of walking in your will, knowing yes. that our lives are impacting the lives of people Help for the sake of the Father. kingdom. We thank you, Father God, for this. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.